from LA Late Headquarters in Santa Monica, this is Afternoons LA Late. It's a big afternoon of Afternoons LA Late with incredible great news about your fourth stimulus check update of 2021, direct and live from Santa Monica, California today. In this recording, we're going to go over the fourth stimulus recon, or aka the Build Back Better Act or the, def or the budget bill that seemed to go off the rails last Sunday, then go back on track on Monday to now Tuesday, going into Wednesday, we have new indication of what the Democrats are gonna do to get this done. The voting would happen in January, but where will the negotiations go? Tuesday's a critical day for this recon, why? Because there will be a Zoom chat with those Democratic senators to get it passed. They vow that the recon will get passed, and guess who also vowed about that? Joe Manchin. In a new interview release, he now says that Senate changes can get it passed, and those Senate changes will be covered in this recording that'll pay you at least $15,000 a check so far in this recon, before they add in a potential MSC, monthly IRS stimulus checks. No time or place, though, to wait for four stimulus to become a law in January. You can get the third stimulus today. This third stimulus has been paying out viewers on average $5,000. Over the last two weeks, we call this Christmas stimulus on the channel or holiday stimulus. Four to six months of rent to utilities across the board after few has got $45,000 from it earlier this year. In this recording, I show you how to get this big sums of money and the big sums of money, of course, and forced stimulus as well. Student loan debt forgiveness. There's an offer on the table. And in view of what happened this week, will the Democrats say the latest offer? Then we turn to fifth stimulus and your COLA raise coming in January and your impact on SNAP benefits, your questions answered as well. Moreover, we have a big understanding, a better understanding now of where this economy is going, but now we have a worse understanding of where the variant's going. So in view of the breaking news that came out of the CDC and Dr. Fauci overnight about what we are doing with or without the variant right now, we get new indications of how that will impact economic growth in the new year and how it could dramatically impact numbers across the board. All this economic news from the number one most watched geopolitical financial news channel America, LA Light. The excitement starts right here, right now, and it goes right into a big day. And the excitement I'm excited to deliver to you starts this very moment, direct from Santa Monica, California, on a big day of recordings. And that is right now. Hey, good day, everybody. Hope you're having a beautiful day and hope the weather is good. You are. L jump in the live chat and tell me where you're tuning in from and how the weather is. Well, the recon will get passed in the month of January. So says Democrat senators, including Joe Manchin in his second interview. Senate changes will be coming. So says many senators, but some House members says, I'm not changing anything. Wow. The House programs got in there about $15,000, but the MSC's not. Will they still add them? I have the latest details in this recording. The $45,000 that viewers got early this year from second, from third stimulus is great because guess what? They're coming back and getting another round, and I'll show you what it means to get another round of third stimulus. And if you've gotten some of this other round, how you can get more rounds in the next few days, and how you get more rounds in January. This is all details of big money you can cash and get in your wallet today. Soon loan debt forgiveness, the latest details on that, plus the breaking details about this stimulus, your color raise, and the impact on your your SNAP benefits across the board. Those details are more plus what's going on in the Federal Reserve come Q1. In view of the breaking news about the variant overnight, I have the latest details from Dr. Fauci and the CDC. Why is the situation changing so quickly? Because of the latest variant and what will be the next variant thereafter. Those details are more as we go into a big day. I'm excited you're here. But first, go under this video right now and subscribe. Subscribe and become part of the number one most watched geopolitical economic 
Economic Financial News Channel in America. This is Ally, now the number three most watched financial news channel in America, and expanding with a whole slate of new programming coming in January, with many of the programs testing out this December. Sign up for that incredible newsletter and membership, so you get that newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Membership link is under the video, and sign up for the LA Alerts, which is totally free. That is also under the video as well. It was the day after Thanksgiving where I said, hey, there's this new thing coming out of South Africa. I called it Omicron. Then we understood it was Omicron or Omicron. But guess what? It has now grown to 70 plus percent of all cases in the United States. How does that impact your wallet? How does it impact the recon of all those details later in this video? But let's first start with this incredible recon. The Four Stimulus Recon, a.k.a. the Build Back Better Act or the Democratic Spending Plan, has $15,000 of checks in that recon to start. But you're going to quickly see that it's upwards of a lot more. It's upwards of nearly fifty dollars to $60,000. Let's go over all these incredible checks, the details you're not going to see anywhere else except here on Allied. I'm going to go over the checks scattered across three clusters and two add-ons with a third still coming. And that first cluster is incredible. The first cluster got in there has a pay with the earned income tax credit extended for one more year. $4,000 of elder care. $4,000 of care for young children. They got the CTC, the child tax credit, extended for one more year, approximately $3,600 per child. Then they got in there the home repairs of a living low income community, the $550 Pell Grant check in there as well, and the $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle. That is incredible. There were a lot of push to add things in there, and one of the pushes came from Maxine Waters. She wanted to get in there free money to go buy your first home. This is from the illustrious legislator here in Southern California, where it costs a lot of money to buy your first home, and she got it in there. She wanted to give you $25,000, and certainly considering the price of real estate here in Southern California, it makes sense that she couldn't get that full amount. She got a little bit less. I'm going to go over how you get these incredible sums of money later in this recording and how do you get every single one of these checks. Let's turn to cluster number two, home repairs and paid leave got in there. Wow. So in this second cluster, we have a lot of money. We have in there the paid family leave. We have the universal pre-kindergarten. We have the incredible um, home repairs if you to weatherize your home and also uh, the incredible family, medical, and paid leave. These home repairs are a little bit different. These refer to weatherize your home. And weatherize your home means you sustain natural disaster, which is every time that Joe Manchin has a press conference. <clears throat> Did you feel the natural disaster on Sunday? Yeah, it was another Joe Manchin press conference. <laughs> Uh, the the weather reports suggest there's another one coming. So weather I show quickly. I'll be here with all the bad weather news or the good weather news as well. Let's go into the second add-on of checks. The President of the United States wanted this in there. He got it in there via the illustrious Bob Casey out of Pennsylvania. The Senator got in this provision that will provide a free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities. Wow. They went at 250 They got a little bit less. How do you get this? It's coming up in just a second. Let's go to the third cluster of checks, which is where we find the true deliciousness. In the third cluster, we have seniors and free internet and a lot more. So what is this third cluster? Free school meals for all checks, cheaper prescription medication. We also have in there the, um, the money for the farmers, the free internet. The immigration reform was in the third cluster. It was removed by the Senate Parliamentarian last week. And finally, they got in there the assistance for seniors with two provisions done on the House and three vowing to be added on the Senate. On the House side, they got in there the expansion of Medicare in the Medicaid gap fix and the expansion of Medicare with the adding in of hearing. On the Senate side, they vowed to add three other provisions on those expansions, which are dental, vision, and also lowering the eligibility age of Medicare. Currently at 65, they're concerning either 60 or 55 years of age, which is consistent with what we're looking at when we talk about the nomenclature or the acronym of MSE. MSC refers to multiple IRS stimulus checks, a provision that would provide you at least one or more months of IRS stimulus checks. And the legislators on the Senate side never got around to adding in their stuff that the Senate had already put in there 
uh, the, the, excuse me, the senators never got around to putting their stuff in there, that the House members had already added some of the provisions. So this is consistent with what we're talking about with MSC. The reason why we haven't seen the insertion of MSC is because the senators haven't added any of their provisions in there as well, because of the JoJo reality show of Real Housewives of West Virginia. So the MSC provision, let's go over all the details. When we refer to MSC, why do we say MSC? Because there's a multiple checks in this recon. We don't want to get confused. This would be the one that comes out from IRS. And what's going on when we talk about this? Well, back in the month of May, nearly a half a dozen senators said they're going to give it. Thousands of viewers contacted those senators at the time, and we're told it's going in there. Two weeks ago, I said to reallocate because now the legislation is in the Senate. And since then, the same six senators have said it would be added by the senators when they start adding stuff in there. We have the wonderful Ron Wyden it's telling Donnie and his wife, Sharon, that's going in there, viewers' this channel. We have Lynn Glenn being told the same thing by Bob Casey's office, Tyrell being told the same thing by Chris Coon's office, uh, Janet being told the same thing from Chuck Schumer's office, via Bernie Sanders, and Bonnie being told the same thing by Liz Warren's office. When we talk about that MSC, what are we talking about? Well, they say same eligibility as a first stimulus check, 75000 or less, single individual, got it. Married couple, 150000 or less, double it, got it. Family of four, quadruple it, got it. And if you're on benefits, SSI, SSDI, Social Security, or railroad benefits, you get it as well. It's not income. It's offered across all U.S. states, and it's also offered to adult dependents across the board. Now, in those last two weeks, those six senators have again said it's going in there, but we have the tow truck over the finish line. The tow hitch is attached, but the, it is not over the finish line. We're at the edge of the finish line, and that's why it's important to advocate until we're over the finish line. Here's a message delivered by the chief of staff to the number one guy in the recon in the Senate. And his, the senator's chief of staff writes this to L.A. They now have a total between congressional and senator's offices to receive more contacts of advocacy from the L.A. Purple Power than the number of signatures in the American petition. Everyone's amazed by the outpouring of touching stories. They have a better understanding of what Americans are going through to this pandemic. They have heartbreaking stories in the voice of the people across the nation. You, L.A., as you have become too loud to be ignored. Please continue your encouragement for the continued advocacy as a professional voice of the people you have become until this becomes a law. And that's why it's important to advocate to those legislators. Who do you advocate to? What are their names? Let's look at them. It is Casey, Coons, Warren, Wyden, Sanders, and Schumer. These are the senators you want to advocate to who have said to viewers, it's going back in there. Casey, Coons, Warren, Wyden, Sanders, and Schumer. But no time and place to wait. It's also time point and blank to advocate for your wallet right now. As the variant that first was identified in South Africa is now 70 plus cases, 70% of the cases in the United States right this week after being less than 3% of the cases last week. The situation is very important for you to get as much assistance as possible. And that is why I want you to get Third stimulus, like today. Third stimulus in the second half of this video, I'll show you how to get, on average, $5,000. The viewers of this channel the last two weeks have gotten $5,000, four to six months of rent, two to three utilities, and I'm going to show you how to get more of this money if you got to the last few days after you got nearly $45,000 earlier this year. I'm going to go over the Senate changes to this recon, for stimulus recon, and how it's going to get passed. I have new details today, new comments, new quotes, new today from Jollop, Pramila Jollop, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, new from Joseph Biden, and new from, of course, the guy himself, Joe Manchin. Brand new details about the how they're going to get this recon done. The incredible checks. I'm going to go over more about them in the second half of this recording. We'll be turning to student loan debt forgiveness, the latest details on that. Plus, what you need to know about that COLA raise coming in January. What will do to your other benefits like SNAP. I'll explain those details plus I'll give my insight as to where the economy is going, what the Federal Reserve will do in Q1 in view of the latest trending data about the variant today. Those details are more as we go into a big second half of this recording. I'm excited you're here, but first, here's a little bit about the community page. I'll be back with you in 60 seconds as LA continues. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. 
their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals. Reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues right now as LA goes to the second half with that recon vowing to be passed in the month of January from both the Democrat caucus and the White House. How are they going to get it done? I have all the analysis in the second half of this video. Lots of breaking news, brand new today on this recording. Students' changes are dramatic that will be coming, so to some people. What will be the changes? The pro programs in this incredible recon will pay you a lot, upwards of $15,000. But will there be more or less money for you when these changes come in place? I'll have the latest details. The incredible checks available today for third stimulus across the board are really the delight of viewers. They got in their holiday stimulus. You can as well. I'll explain to you how you get this Christmas stimulus average of $5,000. Student loan debt forgiveness. The latest details on that. Plus, what's going on with that cola raise on January 1 and its impact on your other bits like SNAP and also what would happen with fifth stimulus. Will be at the same time as fourth stimulus in January. All those details are more in the second half of this video and it starts right now but first i want you to subscribe go right on this video and subscribe to the number three most watched financial news channel in the united states it's ally light number one overall on geopolitical news which you're watching right now subscribe like this video and consider becoming a member to this incredible channel so you get an alert when a new video goes live and you get that incredible newsletter that comes out Monday through Friday. Meantime, sign up for the LA Late Alerts, which is free. It's at news.com forward slash alerts and a link to it is under this video. And with that, we go into the latest breaking details with, of course, the shocker about the variant overnight. Those details are more as we go into the big second half and here we go right now. It has been a tumultuous, needless to say, week that I had predicted no less than a week ago. I had told you last Monday, not this week, but the Monday before that, that you cannot miss a single day or a single hour of recordings on this channel because I expected a lot of twists and turns by the hour. I didn't expect it to be this dramatic, but it really is. Real Housewives of West Virginia? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Let's go over what the latest status is right now. The latest status right now is that the recon is still on board. Number one. Number two, that the voting would happen in January. Number two. Number three, that they vow that it will pass in the month of January and become a law in the month of January. And number four, that we don't see many of the programs in jeopardy, with the exception of maybe one or two, many of which were never big fan favorites of this channel overall or the viewers of the ship of the channel. So overall, everything looks good. The only thing that lacks clarity is the big H O W. How? And ironically, in a year in which people said the Democrat Party does not have a clear message, they does not have a clear message how to do this today as well. Let's go over the new approaches that we're hearing today at the time of this recording, some of which just came in minutes ago. We have several different groups of individuals in the Democratic Party saying different ways to get this done first. We will deal with Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin's series of quotes since that Sunday scandalous interview on Fox News says he'll do the recon, but you have to change some things. And changing the things means he's not against doing 1.5, 1.7, 1.9. He's not, he does not have a problem with the big top line number. He has a problem with the programs. And what program does he specifically have a program problem with? Well, we know it's paid leave because he said that in the last through two months. He did not say in the last two days, but we know he doesn't want it in there. He wants paid leave, but he wants it to go by bipartisanship. He doesn't want to go by recon. Number two, brand new overnight is he's saying, I do not want to do the CTC ever again. He thinks the CTC is ripe for abuse. Now let's go into the details of his question of his comments. He's not against the CTC. 
So, and he makes that very emphatically clear. He's not against children getting the money. He's against the way in which the money is being sent out. And you got to agree with the guy, um, because guess what? He says a lot of children are not raised by their parents. They're raised by uh, an adoptive person. They're raised by a maternal grandmother, because maybe the parents are uh, incarcerated, or maybe the parents are, have, have deceased. And he says the law does not provide for it. It's absolutely correct. I've been featuring this on this channel for a while. So this is not a bad problem. This is just a language problem. Fix the language, and he's on board. Any other major provision that he has a problem with? Not really. Now, we had heard earlier in the summer that he was against some of the, the Medicare expansion, but he backtracked on it and was fine with that. So, so far, we have seen nothing specifically that can't be fixed that he likes. Okay, so how to fix the provisions? Well, there have been different approaches. The first approach we learned today was that the White House, specifically the President of the United States, made a phone call to Joe Manchin the Sunday right after the Fox News interviews aired and had a very good conversation. They got along well. And Joe Manchin does not dispute this. They say the two have a very good rapport. Joe Manchin today is ind indicating even more in detail that he has massive massive problems with certain staffers in the White House. Uh, Joe Manchin playing victim, perhaps. Joe Manchin trying to deflect, be passive aggressive, perhaps. But when it comes to the president, that's who he negotiates with. He's fine with that guy. So that guy, the, the, the leader of the free world. So he's fine with the, with the negotiating with the president. On the other side, Chuck Schumer, his approach, the, the, the approach that this channel has advocated for and the approach that this channel has won. Back on Wednesday, when we saw issues eroding and we didn't even have this problem yet, this channel launched the hashtag campaign on social media called hashtag Chuck Call the Vote altogether. And we're still launching that campaign. It's, gone, it's trended as well internationally and nationally in the United States. Hashtag Chuck Call the Vote. And it worked. After really storming uh, Sh Leader Schumer's Twitter handle with the information that you need to just call the vote. Stop delaying the vote. He said, I'm calling the vote. So what is Chuck's approach to this? That calling the vote in January solves the situation. Ironically, that has been the messaging of this channel since the month of May, and every single viewer of this channel practically agrees. Why? The, when you call a vote, you solve problems. First, before you vote on the Senate floor, you have debate. And the debate has the opportunity for people to publicly, into the congressional record, express what's the problem. It's different when you're writing an op-ed for a publication like Joe Manchin. It's different when you're paying Fox News and you're paying for 10 minutes. It's different when you're um, having a Zoom chat. A floor debate is back and forth. It's going to have people ask Joe, what do you not like? I don't like the CTC. Well, what part do you not like? I don't like that if the person's raised by the grandmother, the kid, the, the kid gets nothing. It's going to go to the mother who's incarcerated. Where does the money go? We can fix that, Joe. That's how people work it through when there's a floor debate. That's the purpose of why our founding fathers created a floor debate. You don't get that interaction unless it happens. Number two, you also have the opportunity to mend during the, the voting process, either before, during, or shortly after. Viewers' channels know this because I've detailed extensively over the last year. You have the changing the legislation before the floor date. You have the floor debate and then changing the legislation before the vote. And then you have changing the legislation during the voterama, a two-day event that appears in 48 hours after the floor vote. A lot of opportunity to change things. This works. Now, very easy and breezy, it is if you call the vote. And Chuck hasn't done this. And this has been really the, the rallying cry of this channel, and now the viewership as well. Back in May, most viewers now contend of this channel that Chuck Schumer made an error by splitting the infrastructure apart from the recon they were originally together and not calling the vote for them together at the time. Making the concession for Joe Manchin and then ultimately not getting either pass in the month of May. Then viewers believe that in the summer, when there was an opportunity to call the vote again, there was a mistake not to call the vote. And then, of course, Leader Schumer now representing in December that the vote would be called in the Senate this week, the week of Christmas, before Christmas Eve, and pass in the Senate before Christmas Eve, and never even called the vote. Viewers believe that calling the vote fixes the situation. What's the sentiment? Is what's the what's the uh, subtext of the situation? The subtext is that Joe Manchin has a history of saying no, but when you call the vote, he says yes. He did that with the defense with the uh, the U.S. spending um, um, the, the, the the spending bill a few weeks ago, and he did it with the defense spending bill as well. He said no just hours before the vote, and he said yes. So he has that history. Number two. 
It clarifies the situation. Number three, and this is where I get a little bit more critical on this, it clarifies the problems the White House, not Joe Manchin, has created in this legislation. There's a series of problems in the way the legislation is written, and among them, Joe Manchin indicates as to a problem with CTC, is that it, among other provisions, are written to suggest that there are one-year programs but that the White House, in Joe Manchin's words, and I have my analysis in just a second, are deliberately masquerading a 10 to 20 year, pro 20 year program as a one year program. And he says, guess what? I have support from me on, my, on this point because the Congressional Budget Office, a nonpartisan organization, looked at this as well and agreed. Well, I agree as well. I've been looking at this legislation for over a year. And every time the press statements come out from the White House, they do not line up with the body of legislation, where the legislation says one year, the earned income tax credit for hazard pay individuals, expanding it for one more year. And then the White House says in describing it, it's going to change for generations to come. A lifetime permanent change to the child tax credit so that no child will ever go hungry or suffer ever in the United States. It's supposed to be 12 months. Wait a second, is it lifetime, is it generational, or is it 12 months? Joe Manchin says, it's tricky language that I've been telling them it's tricky language. Make it clear so it's one year and I'll support it. And guess what? Congressional Budget Office says it's tricky. I say it's tricky. And guess who also has said it's tricky? Mitch McConnell. He says everyone in Senate knows it's tricky language. And guess what makes this even more problematic? was that the legislation originally was to be 20 to 10 to 20 years at a $7 trillion price tag, then reduced to 10 years at a $3.3 trillion price tag. Now at 1.7 at a, quote, one-year pr program a running price tag. Joe Manchin says, no, this is still the 10-year price tag or the 20-year price tag uh, programs. You just masqueraded it as one year. So this is why a floor vote works. What are the other new things coming in today as well? Pramila Jalapal, who is the... House uh, progressive leader who has not kept in her promises to the American people whatsoever in this recon at all over and over again, says that Joe Manchin hasn't kept his promises, and she says no one should negotiate with him. They should just keep the bill the way it exactly is. Well, this is a problem with the viewers of this channel, because a lot of the viewers of this channel says she didn't keep her promises to us, and the bill is not right at the moment. Pramila Jalapal, of course, is the person who said that when the four stimulus recon would debut in the House side, there would be monthly stimulus checks every month for six months, $2,000 the first month and $1,000 thereafter. She never put it in there. Then she told thousands of viewers of the channel she would put it in there before it goes to the House vote. She didn't put it in there. And there was a lot of other stuff she told people across this country it would go in there. They never went in there. In fact, um, we were told housing was going to go in there, and if it wasn't for Maxine Waters, it got uh, removed. And Maxine Waters fought to get it back in. So there's a lot of stuff Pramila Jalapal did not promise, keep her promise with. She also said she would never allow the infrastructure to pass and land on the White House's desk before your recon. She did. She made a concession, allowed it to pass. And so she has, whether fallen for uh, moderate Democrats' maneuverings or not keeping her promises, hasn't done that well. So that is the second approach. Don't negotiate with Joe Manchin. Third approach is Joe Manchin's approach, which is has to be overhauled. And then maybe I'll get to it. I like it. Now, this do this and maybe has been the destruction of months of time where Joe Manchin says, do something for me and then I'll consider the situation. That's not how you legislate. And I don't know how anyone bought into it day one, back when he said, separate from the roads and bridges, maybe I'll do it or I will do it. I will, so I, I will likely do it. No, 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 no. Nancy Pelosi, bless her soul, she saw this game plan in the House. And what did she do with the moderate and progressive Democrats when she saw the moderate Democrats try to play that? I'll do it if you do that. She said, no, I'm going to have you raise your hand. I'm going to have you write it in writing. I'm going to have you sign it. I'm going to have you vote for a provision that you're going to do it. And we're going to have it in the congressional record in the House. Uh, Nancy, lead, Nancy is leading by example. This is how you you lock people down to a position. You don't have them say to you over a cup of coffee or Joe Manchin, I'll do it if you, you know, I'll think about it if you, if you maybe, um, well, sort of, yeah, I, yeah, probably. I, I think so. No, you lock him down with an actual vote. Chuck Schumer, if he wants to call votes in January, he should call that vote as well. 
he should call a Joe Manchin vote that he vows that if you do this and this, then he'll support the recall. If he doesn't do it, it's basically a no vote. Then why is also calling the vote for Chuck Schumer so important? Because millions of Americans will watch these spam. They'll probably be covered on broadcast media here, and they'll see these provisions that the White House put in here, they're flawed. They are writ they have the great intentions, but they're written the wrong way. And people have been telling them for months to fix it. They haven't fixed it. And they'll see that on broadcast media. And they'll understand across the board. Now let's go into, that was a lot. <laughs> let's go over the incredible checks that are in this recon one at a time. And those incredible checks pay you a lot of money, upwards of $15,000 across the board. Let's go over each of them and where the status of them is right now and what the status of them would be if this recon passes the Senate in January. This is brand new today. So paid leave in there, $1,700 a week if you make $70,000 or more per year, $800 a week if you make $35,000 or more per year, $400 a week if you make $15,000 or more per year, all income levels, W-2, 1099, all type of employees. And if you don't work, but you live with your son or daughter and they do work and they take off from work once a week to take to the doctor, they would get the check. Will this survive in the, ha in the Senate? I don't think so. I think that this really is a Joe Manchin uh, no start, non-starter. He wants to do it by bipartisanship. Now, um, this is where there's a problem. Uh, I, I think that a guy who wants to do something and says do it somewhere else is to sort of deflecting the situation because as one senator said, there is not enough Republicans who will ever do this by bipartisanship. So Joe Manchin needs to sort of say, I want it, uh, why not do it? You shouldn't say, I want it, we shouldn't do it unless the Republicans support it. Uh, Chuck Schumer can call the vote on that. How many Republicans support it? Two? Okay. So we, we can't pass a Joe Manchin this way. You have to keep in the ring up. If, if, Joe, if, Joe, if Chuck Schumer does that and gives that clarity to Joe Manchin, I think Joe Manchin will, will, will vote in favor of it. Then we got in there the salt cap. $10,000? No. $72,500 of now is what you will be then be able to deduct on your federal taxes or what you pay in state and local taxes. It would raise up the number from $10,000 in the Trump 2000 tax overhaul. They have in there $40 billion of free job training. Really helpful for millions of Americans who want to take that higher paying job. You'll get the free job training. And then we have in there one of the best provisions of the entire recon, the $150 billion of housing assistance with six provisions, three new and three old. The three new ones in a second, they are first time home purchases, the weatherize your home and the home repairs, but the three that look eerily familiar are repeat from third stimulus. And you don't have to wait for third stimulus, for fourth stimulus to become law. You can get them today from third stimulus. They are rent, utilities, mortgages, this is more, and wow, this is great news. This is why you watch this channel back in December 2020. I had an exclusive of what would become third stimulus. And I said at the time, this has a lot of money in here. I think I can get you $15,000 and I'm going to call it third stimulus. I want you to learn what this is. When it became a law, viewers pounced and got on average $45,000 from this earlier this year. Well, I said, let's stay on point and let's get more of that money over the summer. And viewers did. They got an additional round. Two weeks ago, I saw some familiar situation. It looked like December 2020. In December 2020, first stimulus was ending. There was no second stimulus. It wasn't happening. We needed money. So I stepped forward and showed how people how to get money for rent and utilities during the holidays. And we got 250000 at the time when there was very little of it around. So two weeks ago, I brought it back on the channel, third stimulus. And I said, you know what? I don't think people know this. And they said, I don't. One, if you got third stimulus earlier this year, you can get another round. What is another round? I'll explain that in a second. Number two, if you never got third stimulus, this massive sums of money, then you can still get it because there's a lot of that money. And the success stories continue to come on in. What's important to understand is this, this is how it works. You have a lot of cash in your wallet, in your pocket. It's to pay the landlord the December rent, which let's say is $1,000. Well, what's, let's say someone else comes in and says, I'll pay the rent for you. You can keep that $1,000 in your wallet. Suddenly, you have now freed up $1,000. So with that $1,000, you can then go buy some holiday gifts. Let's say the same thing for the utility bill. You have $250 in your wallet to pay the gas bill, and you don't have to take it out because someone else is paying the gas bill. Then that's $250 to go buy a holiday meal. This is true Christmas stimulus, and the success stories continue to come on in. Because the running time, I'm not going to go over all the incredible success stories, but let me tell you what's happened. Thousands of viewers of this channel in the last two weeks have got on average four to six months of rent. 
and two utilities and averaged out about 5000 The low has been very high. The low has only been like a $2,300. The high end has been $138,000. Um, so people are getting massive sums of money and not getting even really small sums of money. Let's go over how you get this money right now. It starts with the rent. And we're going to go over that rent. And yes, people are getting on average four to six months of rent. Let's look at the graphic that viewers got for rent back in the month of uh, the summer, three months ago. They were getting on average twenty to $30,000 of rent. Now they're getting upwards of $40,000 for rent. So where do you get it? Get your pen and paper out right now. If you're a member of this channel, get the newsletter out and follow along with me. You'll reach out to six places. City Hall, City House Authority. County Hall, County House Authority. State Hall, State House Authority. And the keywords you say, rent assistance because of COVID. Mortgage utility assistance because of COVID. There you go. Now, there are three musts you must do. Number one, you must reach out to all six places. Number two, you must get applications on file as many places as you can. Number three, you must do multiple rounds. So, for example, if you got money early this year, get another round today. If you got a round yesterday from one organization, get another round from another organization today. I'll be detailing this more in the final five minutes of this video. Then do the same thing for mortgage assistance as well. Utilities, do it for all utility companies. And Mark's brother-in-law got $15,000. The utility number is going up a lot. Snap, it is money for food. If you got a third stimulus check, you should not be paying for food. Contact Department of Agriculture. And boys are going up a lot. It went up 25% lifetime automatically on average in the month of October. And Mark's brother-in-law is getting $25,000 a year because of the channel. Yes, that's a quarter million dollars over the next 10 years. Get at least three items. It started with Nisi and Art Sullivan. Here's Nisi back in the summer. They inspired a generation of viewers to get three or more items, which is what I now say. Here at the time, Mark was at three items. Excuse me, two items, 32000 I said, Mark, where's your third? He got it. Brought him to 50000 He got more since then. He's at over 100000 Lorraine, she was at one five, and now she's at one twenty. Which brings us to the incredible inspirational story from Johnny, who did this really well. Part one of Johnny's story starts this way. He started on a Monday with $0. By Wednesday, he had gotten $45,000 from three programs by watching this channel. Great. But he also heard this recording when I say, keep on reaching out to get other programs to pay money to you. And by the end of the week, he had seven programs paying his bills. Now, to get seven programs, you're going to have to make at least 15 phone calls. That's what you want to do because you're going to have about a 50% rejection rate. So how much money did Johnny get in seven days? Five days from seven programs? 80 thousand dollars. Part two of Johnny's incredible story followed the following Monday. He told his family members, two of them, he had gotten $80,000 last week from LA. They said, from what? He said, from third summer. Third summer? I thought it was just a $14 summer check. No, they don't cover this in broadcast media. He covers it. I'll show you how to get it. They watched the videos. They became members. They subscribed. And by the end of the week, they each got $50,000 each. They became believers. Part three of Johnny's incredible story came in three weeks ago. I was watching Sunday Night Football, and in came the Instagram, Instagram a private message from Johnny. Hey, I like big update. People kept on coming over to the house saying, I heard what you've been doing with Third Stimulus, and I want to watch the Allied videos with you. I want to become a member and subscriber, but I also want you to tell me how you do it. And they watched, and they learned, and they did it. And how many people did Johnny help? 32 people. And what did Johnny say? All right, of those 32 people, I got them a total of $850,000. This is what you do. This is why you're here. This is All right. So go right on this video right now and sign up with that incredible membership newsletter. And that membership will send you out that newsletter Monday through Friday so you learn about all these incredible sums of money in this incredible recording. You want to learn about all these monies in this recording because guess what? This is money available to you right today. Go right on this video right now and under it, it says membership. And click the link and become a member. Get that incredible newsletter that comes out Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. View the YouTube alert system and the LA Light alert system. The membership newsletter features all the big money in first, second, and third stimulus. It features stuff covered in the video and stuff not covered in the video. So it'll feature the six places you reach out to. It'll feature the keywords you say. It'll feature the three musts, but also feature stuff not covered in the videos, like the five nonprofits. It'll feature what those five nonprofits help with in regarding your bills and uh, 
items. It also features the one nonprofit that it helps with home repairs. It also features the important treasury statement about rent you want to read, read before reaching out to get this incredible sums of money. And with that, let's continue with the other items that are in fourth stimulus that are definitely needed in view of the expansion of that virus overnight and this week. With Omicron now counting to over 70% of U.S. cases, it was at 3% last week. The other programs in that recon has three other items for housing. First, first-time home purchases. Money given to the seller in your name by the federal government at the time of escrow. Number two, home repairs if you live in a low-income community. Then, finally, weatherize your home for all types of homes. They got in there $150 billion of housing, uh, a home care for seniors and people on disabilities. The $550 check for the Pell Grant recipients, college students, they got in there $12,500 for a purchase of a new electric vehicle at the time of purchase in a U.S. auto manufacturer dealership when the car is made in the United States territories. And then they got $65 per month per student when they're not in school for nutrition, which brings us to the best provision of this entire recon is the cheaper medication. It'll start on day one with 20 medications dramatically discounted from where they've been for decades. Medicare Part B, D, cancer, arthritis, diabetes, for example, an insulin dose going from $1,000 to $35. It'll grow to 30 medications by the year 2028 and cannot increase more than the rate of inflation. Let's go over some of the other incredible provisions of this recon, but first, it's important to look at that graphic on air. You see how that graphic says $15,000? Well, clearly there's a lot more than $15,000 of checks in this recon, because we have everything from third stimulus continuing over, and that's $45,000. We have the said add-ons that haven't gone in there and potentially the MSC IRS stimulus checks. So we're clearly, before we even have the MSCs added in there, about $50,000 of checks just to start. What are the uh, some of the other checks in that recon? There are the home repairs, the Pell Grant, the uh, and also the important programs that are now in jeopardy of expiring. So the earned income tax credit will expire. The uh, The the child care, the, the CTC and the child care and the CTC are both set to expire. So what they're going to have to do is come on in, modify the language of the recon so that they reinstitute the programs because they can no longer use continuation of language in this recon. Now, let's turn also to just a blink of an eye that student loan debt forgiveness offer and what you should know about January 1 with your SNAP benefits and that color rise. A lot of details, and it's coming up right now. So first, let's go over to that incredible offer the Democrats should take it. The president has offered to forgive $10,000 of student loan debt for individuals across the board. The Democrats should take it. The president previously forgave student loan debts for individuals who became disabled after graduation and people who went to work in the nonprofit or public sector. Then, how about this stimulus and that COLA raise? So everyone's benefits are going up 5.9% January 1. Automatic, you don't have to do anything. And this is income, remember. Your benefits are income. Now, as your benefits go up 5.9%, your COLA could get adjusted downward slightly because your COLA, excuse me, your, your um, SNAP could get adjusted downward slightly because your SNAP is based upon how much income it is. It won't be dramatically discounted. If it is, you need to reach out to part of an agriculture because something else is going on that has nothing to do with that COLA raise. Fist stimulus comes right behind that and seeks to Raise up your benefits one time, apply a new benchmark, and then remove the asset cap, remove the income cap, and remove the marriage penalty. This stimulus was supposed to start in January, would likely start in, in was supposed to start in December, likely to start in January. Will overlap with four stimulus. There's no problem with that. And there you go. Now, finally, what's going on with the Federal Reserve? What's the impact of the latest expansion of the variant? And let me go over my uh, thoughts of where we are going into next week, and I have a few more comments about Pramila Jalapal's remarks overnight. So, the variant now is a much more severe situation than anyone would have thought. I first went on air the week of Thanksgiving, saying that there was new data about a new variant, I couldn't pronounce it right, I wasn't sure what it was, and I wasn't sure anything about it. Guess what? As we sit here today, we really still are not sure about the situation, except that one, it's expanding and it's spreading dramatically. Number two, it's the number one dominant strain in the United States. Of, of the, it's the number one most uh, 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 occurring variant in the United States of new cases this week. And that was not the case last week. Number three, 
there is a series of new comments out from uh, the White House that says, if you're not vaccinated, you're in trouble. And there's a lot of concern that if you look at big groups like professional athletes that are double vaccinated, um, individuals double vaccinated, uh, the double vaccination is still not blocking Omicron, that the booster is critical to at least perhaps helping against Omicron. We still do not know at the time of this recording if the booster helps against Omicron, but it certainly helps against Delta. And so the importance of the booster is very critical. Now, there's a new issue out today is that there's starting to become a shortage of testing. And the White House is going to be sending out some uh, free testing, COVID testing to households across the country. Very, very important across the board. So if you've not gotten boosted, you need to get boosted. Very, very important. Number two, it's hard to get an appointment to get boosted. And number three, um, get ready to be prepared for another booster, potentially in a few months from now, because a lot of the companies are preparing an Omicron-specific booster. Let's go back into the impact on this economy. The impact on this economy is that we do not believe that there'll be lockdowns at the moment, but there's a major impact on industry right away, right away. Travel, leisure immediately hit. Uh, schooling is expected to be hit next. Education is expected to be hit uh, dramatically because things are starting to shut down and revert back to how it looked in December 2020 once again. And so this is not the way we were 30 days ago. Please understand that. And this will impact the economy. What does this mean for the Federal Reserve? The Fed Chairman Jay Powell, in his update, his last update of the year last week, said, this is what we're doing, but I'm not putting myself in a box. I'm not putting myself on lock and chain. If the variant changes, I will have to pivot and do something different. So what did he say then? He was going to taper faster, and until the tapering is done, he's not going to talk about any interest rate spikes. Well, at the moment, he is absolutely not going to go anywhere near an interest rate spike with this situation with the variant. And he may revert on the tapering speed if the variant is expected to do what I think it's going to do, which is really impact this account, economy negatively in the, the months of December, January, February, March. Many of the hospitals are now saying you're going to see the impact of the variant in the hospitals in January because it takes a certain number of weeks for people to get sick, for people to catch it, then they get sick, then a few more days for them to realize they're sick enough to go to the hospital. And then we don't get the data for a few more weeks after that. So you're not likely to see the health data until January, which would impact the Fed's actions on perhaps in Q1. Very, very interesting across the board. And with that, let's go back into where I believe we are going with this recon and the White House and Joe Manchin. The recon should be a wake-up call for Democrats that they have made a series of mistakes. And if they do not fix these mistakes, January will become February and February will become March. What are the mistakes? One. Things that don't have to be in the recon should never have been in the recon. And that is why we are having months of different repeating problems. Number one, energy and climate should have never been in the recon. It should have been standalone, a bipartisan legislation. I don't buy that Republicans don't want climate changes. I don't buy it. I think they really do. Perhaps when you do climate in a different way, Republicans get on board. I don't buy that no Republican wants to do about climate. It also doesn't send a clear message to the countries across the globe that we go into climate conferences and the United States is passing a climate bill. No, you shoved it down the throats of half of the congressional body because you wanted to do it your way and they didn't want to do it that way. So that doesn't send a clear message. If you want to be part of global climate conferences, you should show complete agreement among your congressional leaders. You shouldn't be showing, we had to do it by bipartisan, we had to do it by recon because we couldn't get anyone to agree with. It doesn't show that people are on board. Does it look like your states would do it if, 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 the, if the senators from the states don't want to do it? No, that's not the imagery. The climate should have been separate. Number two, the White House has been told for months, fix the language, fix the language. Whereas the CTC running for 20 years or you know 100 years, fix the language. It's not fixing the language. And there are some people that are sort of tied in a bow 
and a not with the way they wrote their language and thinks it's absolutely positive and wonderful. Now, on the other hand, there's the flip side of the situation. Joe Manchin wanted to portray himself as a victim, passive aggressive, wanting to say it's someone else's fault, it's, it's the staff. Joe Manchin has an inherent problem, which I've featured on this channel for many, many months. Vague. I'll sorta, maybe, I think about it. Okay, sorta, I'm not gonna answer. Yeah, well, okay, no, this is not, this is not um, a date. You're not romancing someone. You're going to do body of legislation. It's yes or no. Yes or no. And you don't get that until you call votes. Leaving legislation and subcommittees indefinitely is a Republican trick. We learned that in 2020 when a lot of legislation was supposed to land in the Senate and, uh, and, and they said, we'll just send it to a subcommittee. It will die in the subcommittee. Dying in a subcommittee is a very old adage. Don't let things die in subcommittees. Joe Manchin looks often like he's trying to make things die, slowing it down. He uses that expression, pause. I need to pause because I need more data. That's a Mitch McConnell 2020 game. I need pause to see more data. Not to say he is uh, going to say no to it, but he has certainly been very successful at delaying situations and things. No Democrat should allow him to delay anything anymore. No Democrat, whether it's White House, Chuck, or Pramila Jalapal, or Bernie Sanders, should allow Joe Manchin to delay movement forward on the recon. He's very good, Joe Manchin, delaying things. Now, he may be very good in, in getting things done eventually, but at the moment he's delaying things. And that should be the case in point going into, uh, into today's Zoom meetings being held by Democrat caucus. Number two, president has not had one message. I understand he's not a legislator. I understand he's head of the executive branch. He's the president of the United States. He's not a senator. But he has taken the job to be the chief negotiator. Either you put all your feet in in your hands or you don't. Either you leave it up to Chuck or you don't. So for the president to be in there and be full feet and full legs and arms and face in there, he has to have one message out there all day long. We can't have Pramila Jalapal saying, we're not going to negotiate with Joe Manchin. We can't have uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi saying, we're not going to modify any of the legislation. That's all fine. We can't have Chuck Schumer saying, we'll modify some of the legislation. I literally could keep on recording for another hour to give you 20 more versions I've heard of what Democrats want to do if, with the situation. President needs to, he needs to show his leadership as the head of his party. If there was one thing that we have seen the difference between Donald Trump and Joseph Biden, Donald Trump ran things as his situation and only his situation. So stubborn, but only his way. I'm doing it this way, my way, you're doing exactly, no, I don't wanna hear your way, you're doing exactly the way I want it, but Mr. President, no, you're doing exactly my way. Joe, Joe Biden, he does the opposite and is very accommodating and very polite and kind and, and liking, but that is working against him, against him. He has had staffers do one thing different than him. He has had the House do something different than the Senate. He needs to come in and be much more heavy-handed. Meantime, we're learning a lot more data today about the dramatics before that Fox News interview. We now know that Joe Manchin initially sent over a courier or message to the White House that he was going to appear on Fox News on a Sunday to talk about the Fort Simmons recon. He did not give a lot of clarity about what he was going to say. And then the White House, presumably the president, called over to Joe Manchin before he appeared on Fox News, and Joe Manchin refused to take the phone call. Mm, 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 mm. So there is clearly a deep divide here. And the deep divide comes from a personality conflict. Personality conflicts are always the cause of the all evil. And we have to accept they just are all over the place. Joe and Joe like each other, get along well. Joe Manchin doesn't like the staffer. Get the staffer out of the equation. Get the staffer gone. The, the press secretary shouldn't be going after Joe Manchin every 10 seconds. She shouldn't be doing that. It doesn't help any situation. The president of the United States shouldn't be issuing press releases going after Joe Manchin. It doesn't help the situation. Either you have one message, which is to work kind with the guy, or the other message is you just go after him. Uh, and you can't have two versions because, as Joe Manchin says, you can't come after me and then treat me kind in the next meeting and hug me because I ain't going to like you because you just came after me. And in his words, beat me up. He says, you, they, 
and he says they're misrepresenting his positions, they're portraying him in a, in a light that's untrue. But on the other hand, he's also portraying himself as a victim. He says, I don't like people protesting outside me driving into driveways. You're a, a public official, folks. You're a public official, my friend. Um, you're a public official. Uh, public official, celebrity, um, you don't like what you say, then don't take the job. If you don't like the reaction to what people are saying to you, then don't take the job. It's your job to take heat. And whether it's Kristen Sinema or Joe Manchin, you don't like people walking up to saying, uh, vote in favor of the recon. Oh, how dare you show up uh, while I'm driving my car. Well, I, I'm not going to be able to get you on the phone, so I have a, lot, I have a right to politically protest your position. This ain't the Vietnam War, but it's certainly the recon. <laughs> and people have a right to, right to protest. And his trying to make himself the victim uh, doesn't look good in the situation for himself. With that, join me every day and join me on this channel as a full slate of programming continues. If you've not caught it, Evenings LA has now expanded. Boy, what a great night it is. It's a whole new block of program with Evenings LA brand new every night at 5 o'clock. The latest breaking news direct from Santa Monica, California. Then Evenings Countdown at 6 o'clock. Holiday Street and Stimulus at 7 o'clock. It's part of your holiday decor. And the latest rundown of your stimulus, a short Lighthearted show, everything from holiday decor, food and preparation. A lot of fun, a lot of interaction from viewers. At 8 o'clock is our runaway new hit of the holiday season. It's called Evenings Extra. The latest show to air on this channel every night at 8 o'clock. And then we go into Calcino and your overnight's programming. And with that, I'm so excited you're with me across the board. Make sure you get that third stimulus. Get that money today because all the offices of these agencies are open this week. So get that big money. And with that, I want you part of this family. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers to the YouTube record. Like this video, 2,000, 3,000 likes. And consider becoming a member. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful day. And stay with LA for more.